Time again to go back into the archives. Welcome to Vintage Games here on the NHL Network. I'm Dan Pollard. The Vancouver Canucks had a magical playoff ride in 1982. After sweeping Calgary and ousting the LA Kings, who had beaten the Edmonton Oilers in the first round, the Canucks rode the hot goaltending of Richard Brodeur to beat Chicago to make it to the final. King Richard and the Canucks were now hoping not to get crowned by the defending Stanley Cup champs from Long Island as they open up the final on May 8th of 1982. The officials for tonight's game, Wally Harris, 18-year veteran of the National Hockey League, Ron Finn in his 13th year, Bob Hodges in 10 years, and this is his first final appearance. The goaltenders tonight, Richard Brooker. Here's one man who believes in the Canucks. He has been simply spectacular, a leading contender for the Conslide Trophy. And at the other end, they say the best clutch goalie in the league today, Billy Smith. Trache, Gillies, and Nystrom for the Islanders against Miner, Fraser, and Smeal. Up front for Vancouver, Hallward, and Snips on the defense. Potvaz back there with Morrow. And it's Potvaz and Morrow coming out. Here's the first attack. By the Islanders, Morrow dropped it over for Nystrom going in. He's forced to the boards by Howard. Trache threw a check in on the boards. Nystrom trying to pick it out for New York. Big Clark Gillies coming in. By the Canucks, just shoot it out to center ice. Gillies hooked it back. That's Morrow again. A pass on an open wing slides down the ice. It's waved off. No icing. Howard going back, coming out for Vancouver on the right side. The Canucks on the move. It's cleared in by Miner, wide of the net. And the Canucks are changing, so are the Islanders. And the Islanders bring it to center ice. His Merrick comes in with Tonelli. Tonelli rolled it in front of him. Merrick, he didn't see it. And it bounced back in the net. Lars Lundgren couldn't clear it. It's cut in there by Pearson. Out to the line, and it's all the way down in the New York Islanders zone. Just by the first minute of the opening period of the Stanley Cup Final 82. And it's Tonelli again for the Islanders. At the line, stop. Grinny coming back in. Grinny shot. And Billy Smith, let me tell you, had to be careful and get that hand out quickly. First stop of the game. And the Canucks are at it again. He scored! Billy Smith snuggled, went down, and these Vancouver Canucks continue to surprise. One minute and 29 seconds into the first game of the final in Vancouver. Vicky with a one nothing lead. Boy, they're allowed to come right out in front of the net. Look at number 26 for Vancouver. Moline lugged the puck out in front of the net all by himself. There you see Grenine right beside Smith, dropped the puck and he banked in the rebound. Islanders really a little bit sloppy in their own zone. Do you believe the Canucks? Here they go again. Great play by Moline coming out of the corner of the ring. They announce it as Grenine from Lars Moline. 129, the Vancouver Canucks. Leading one to nothing. Now the Islanders have to figure it out quickly. Longevin back there without a stick trying to clear it. That's Bill trying to keep it in. A long shot from the line was deflected as Bell and let her go from just inside the blue line. They hang on to it on the boards and it's called. As I mentioned, 129. Here's the play coming out of the corner. Merrick. Made the check, Mickey, and then Moline just Where's the defenseman? The Merrick, what's he? He's a centerman way back in his own zone. The defenseman had vacated the area, and you saw Moline come out in front of the net, you know, uncontested completely. And Merrick, I don't know what he was doing back there. He's supposed to be out in the middle of the ice, sort of covering the points, roaming around. But if he hadn't have been there, it may have been worse. Of course, can't be any worse than getting a goal scored against you. But that's a big goal for Vancouver to score in this hockey game to come out here early. And they're going to make this man very happy at this point. Talked to Roger before the game. He said, I'm not too nervous. Uh, we're here. Uh, I suppose a lot of people didn't expect us to be. We're just going to play our game and see if we can continue playing well. Now from the draw, inside the New York line, the Islanders. Troche coming out the center with Bossy on the wing is Bourne going in. Bourne pulled down. The two players slide to the boards to the right of Brodeur. In back of the net. Bourne again. Left it for Troche. 
He tried to knock it in front of the net and couldn't. And that defensive work of the Vancouver Canucks is paying off. They're clearing into the line, but not out. Janssen took a shot away wide and high off the glass. Clear to the line. DeLorme coming out for Vancouver. They're changing as the play goes on. And the Islanders start right back. Janssen's past the center and finally gets the board. And his shot wide of the net. On the other side is Williams. Williams could clear it on Nystrom. Now the Canucks organize. Back to center. Going in the lead with Miner on the right side. It didn't work. Howard backs up with Sneps. Harold Sneps gives it back to Howard. Out to the line, and here they come. The Vancouver Canucks leading one to nothing. Miner scooped it in, and the Canucks are changing every 30 seconds. Merrick starting out for New York with ball to center Janssen. And Tonelli. Tonelli had to slap it in. And the Canucks are checking well. Up near their own blue line. They're standing right up there on the Islanders. Here's Nystrom now looking for somebody free. That's not going to be easy to find. The way these Vancouver Canucks have been playing defensive hockey. There's Nystrom being bodied in on the boards. Redeem comes back to help out behind his own blue line and back to the net. There's Redeem taking a check from Tonelli. It comes in front of the net and the Canucks all back there. Bring it out. It's Smeal. Long pass. In on the wing goes Redeem. A shot wide of the net. At the four minute mark of the period, the Canucks in again. And Billy Smith scooped it away. Vancouver won. New York Islanders, the defending Stanley Cup champions. No score. And the Canucks dump it in. Steps rushing off to the bench. Islanders trying to solve what has been happening now in the first four and a half minutes of this hockey game. And here they come, led by Puckman, going in with Goring. Goring missed Tonelli's pass. Campbell back to the net for Vancouver. Time to clear. And it's knocked down by Smeal, rolled in across the New York line. Puck back again, coming out. Gillings on the left, didn't see the pass, it went by. In behind the net, back there is Campbell, and icing is called against New York. From the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York, this is Stanley Cup. First penalty of the 1982 Stanley Cup final call by referee Wally Harris, who now comes over to the Vancouver bench. We had some extracurricular pushing and shoving. Harold Sneps is off for holding at 10.51, and there he is in the penalty box. I think that Harold is the only Canuck left from the team that played the Islanders in 1976 when New York swept Vancouver in the three-game best-of-three preliminary round. Well, we'll see a good sure. test here by the Vancouver penalty killers. It's something that they thought they'd, they'd have to stay away from, giving the Islanders these power play chances. They've got a tremendous power play with Bossy, Trotje, Big Gillies out there, jams up the front of the net, and they love to feed Pearson and Potvin back at that point. Miner and Moline are out there for Vancouver with Hallward and Lindgren. And you're right, McKean, this is a big test now. On this Islander power play, Gillies with Bossy, Trotje. Hot man up the line. Here's Gilly shooting. Picked out. Rebound to Bossy. Got it in front. It comes back to Pearson. He stops with it to Gillies. Gillies back to him. To Gillies again. Gillies shot. Nice save by Brodeur. Good angle. Brodeur out cutting the angle. And he made the save. Well, people keep saying Mike Bossy hobbled in this playoff series because of a knee injury suffered in the last game of the regular season. But you see it, he leads his team with 10 playoff goals. It has not hobbled his ability to score, Mickey. Well, it sure hasn't, Dick, as you look at the Islanders on this power play. Gillies with a shot, Brodeur doing his thing again, but Bossy doesn't look too hobbled to me in the times I've seen him. There's on for Gillies, shot! Away wide, it's stopped at the line by Putman. Gives it to Bossy, hopped over his stick. Lindgren going in after Trotje. Trotje has it, takes a look up near the line where Putman waits. He has it, the shot, score!
That battle is what was the key, Mickey. Look at Gillies doing his thing. I think he got a piece of this puck, Dick. We'll have to wait for the announcement on it by looking at his reaction after the goal. I think that Gillies got his sticker. Watch him now in behind Berdur. He's right in behind him. Look at that. And I think he got that stick out in front of Berdur and redirected it in behind him. But he's tough to move out in front of that net. Six foot three, 215 pounder. And he can cause some problems. He made a pretty good play, Mick, right off the start of the power play. When he went for the short side, he almost caught for Dur on that one. So we got a tie hockey game. 11:35. Pot Van and Trache assisting Clark Gillies. It's 1-1. Islanders now with a bit of life. They shoot it in again. Nice trip didn't get in there quickly enough, and the Canucks get it up to Nil. Nil is at center, going in with Bolderev. Bolderev on the boards. They get a whistle for a face-off in the New York Islanders zone. Well, there's Big Clark, and we look at it again. Good shot here, Mick. Here you see him back of the net. Good back of the net shot of a dick. And, you know, the important thing here about Gillies, he started this play out originally about the fourth guy to make the starting pass, and he didn't stay off to the side. The important thing is he headed straight for the front of the net and ended up getting the goal. So Gillies from Pot Van Trotje at 11.35 while Snips was off for holding. 1-1, 7.55 left in the opening period, and here's Nystrom coming in. Nystrom gets set, Merrick is in front of the net. It comes all the way back to Morrow. He took his shot. That's grabbed by Rhoda. Rhoda coming out with Nil on the left side. Two of them go in. Nil got in front. But Nystrom is right back for New York. Nystrom coming to this left wing. Take the shot. Got it in front. Tonelli was knocked down in front of the net. And Snips fell on the puck. And the play is called for a face-off in the Vancouver zone. Live from the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York, the Stanley. Play just underway, and it comes to Moline at the Vancouver line. Bolderev near center, Nil and Rhoda up on the play. And the Vancouver Canucks have their power play. But they're having all kinds of trouble getting it organized. Galler couldn't stop that pass. One walk, the score. Six minutes left in the period. Long shot in wide. Langevin fired it on the boards down the ice. Keller racing back to Bolderev. Got back first for Vancouver. Bolderev, Rhoda, nil. Starting out with Moline. The pass missed to the center. Rolls it off the boards. Back there is Pearson. He lost the chance to clear it. The Canucks on the board. That's Nil trying to take it out. Now the Islanders will move it along the left side, but not out. Kept it by Rhoda. Rhoda can run it back to the net. Got it in front. A hit escape. The Islanders pick it up, though. And they get it to center right. Keller just shoots it in. 45 seconds left on this power play for Vancouver. The score tied at one. Still didn't get the pass. Potman sending the Canucks back again. Back there, Eldebrink, he overskated it. Islanders doing a good job killing this penalty. They're standing right up there. That was Morrill. He gave it to Bourne. Bourne wheeling in. Stop. Carroll missed the chance. Now back to center. Drop back. A long shot. Green got in front. Put the slap out of him. He was not flying. Up the line, Lindgren kept it in. Just barely took a shot. Smith blocked it. In the corner, Smeal couldn't dig it out. And the Islanders get it to the line. Pot man rolled against center. One man back for Carroll. Carroll going in. Gets set. Can't shoot it now. He was played perfectly all the way. Here's Gillies. The backhander just missed on the short side. Here's Bossy. Shot. Goal. You know, Bossy didn't even know this goal was in the net, Dick. He was over to the far board right. before he even realized the puck had gotten by Bader. But again, like the first Vancouver goal, all the Canucks got out of the road here. And they were too late getting to Bossy, and he had a perfect time to tee it up. 
The board here is flashing what I'm sure viewers all across the country are saying right now. What a shot. Off the top of the post, his 11th of the playoff. It's 2-1 to one New York. Bodeur screened on the play and didn't see the shot, but a perfect shot by Mike Bossy. 2-1 to one now. There's Bossy again. Going in. Low shot this time. Bodeur stopped it. Snaps from the corner. Clearing it out to center ice. 15.52, the time of that goal by Bossy. Gillies and Carroll assisting. Miner slapped it off the board. The Islanders, though, keep it in. A long drive. That didn't get too far. And snaps back to center ice. Coming in. DeLorme on the right side. Flip the pass over there. Miner stopped, and now he carries on. Miner got it back in front of the net. And the backhander by Gradine was grabbed by Billy Snap. A big pile-up in the New York Islanders net. <laughs> Nicky, having seen the four games the Islanders played against Quebec, just through the first 15 minutes of this one, there is the strong indication that the Islanders are in a lot tougher against this team. No question about it, Dick. And guess who's in the middle of this pile? <laughs> Jagger Williams, after letting the backhand go, went straight for Billy Smith. <laughs> I tell you, they're down 2-1, to one, but I like the way the Canucks are playing this hockey game. They are a lot of intensity out there. Watch Tagger go for the net. Watch DeLorme standing there, and here comes Williams. Bangs into Trottier off. Look at the stick go flying. Up over top of Smith, and poor Smith, the goaltender, he's under the whole pileup. Here comes a Tagger. Look at him. Bingo. Hits his own player. Doesn't matter who's in the road. Ron DeLorme took a pretty good beating from Williams on that play. Well, the Tigers in the penalty box. So is Dave Langevin. Minor penalties to both teams. Time to the penalty, 16-37. 16-37, the time of the penalties. 16-37. Minor penalties. Williams, Langevin. Look at 49-year-old Al Arbor behind that Islander bench. And he is a picture of, I think he illustrates his hockey club uh, very, very well. Very controlled, Dick. Uh, been there before. And never gets too excited. Just uh, when the bell goes, we'll be there to play. And when it's over, uh, we feel pretty confident that we're going to come out of here a winner. There you see the part of the reason for Al Arbor's great work. The championship flags hanging up here. There's another part, too. A guy named Brian Trotsky played center ice for him. Got that right. Some feel the best player in hockey today, including Wayne Gretzky. Jerry Miner against this man. Trotsky on the draw. Vancouver with it. Lindgren at the blue line. Shot. Smith going down. Made the save. Now into the corner. Cleared out by a lane to center. Trotsky trying to set up Bourne. Nearly did. Hot man. Bumping on the boards with Miner, long shot by Lindgren, cleared away. Campbell hooked it in behind the net as Miner trying to dig it out against Lane. And the Canucks for Chucky paying off. They get it back near the line, but a roll to center and Campbell has to come back. 125 left in the penalties for Islanders 2, Canucks 1, Hot man. A pass to Lane. Up the line, he's stopped by Gradine. Gradine and Smeal going in. And a penalty coming up against the New York Islanders. Gord Lane gets the call. Well, a pretty good job by Gradine going in here. Lord, uh, Gord Lane had him tied up. And all of a sudden, Gradine sort of I fell forward, started to spin the wheels right here. Look at him right here. He makes sure that Wally Harris is going to see it, but look where the stick is. Boy, he would be lucky with the mask on there. Gordon Lane with that stick right up across the throat area. And Lane setting it out. There you see it. High sticking call. Lajan in the box with Williams. They have a minute 12 left to serve. Harris has given the high sticking penalty now to the Islanders number 24, Big Gord Lane. Well, the four on, sit four on three situation created here. A lot of skating room out there. And Vancouver with, as you mentioned, Dick, 112. Still left in the two minor penalties to Langevin and Williams. A good opportunity to tie this hockey game up. Redeem, Smeal, they get the draw back near the line. From there, Moline gets set. Decides to pass it back to Redeem. Redeem to Moline. Half the line, shot. In a leg, in front. They score! 
It bounced him behind Billy Smith, and Redeem was there again to knock it in, and it's tied at two. Thomas Gradine has had a super first period, and he's tied the game right here. Well, this is kind of a strange goal here. Look at this puck bounce off of an Islander in front of Billy Smith. It almost goes in there, but Gradine, who had come all the way around the back of the net, Johnny on the spot to pick up the rebound. There it is. Potvin blocks it with the knee. And there comes Gradine around the back of the net, just tips it in, a 2-2 hockey game. Well, he has both Vancouver goals in this hockey game. It's tied 2-2. And Moline assisting along with Fraser. There he is, Thomas Gradine. 17.40, the time of the goal. We have a new game. It's tied at 2. Two minutes and ten seconds left of the period now as the Islanders started out led by Merrick to center. Merrick going in against snaps. Merrick gets set, took a shot, and it's just wide. It went off. Roger, another penalty coming up. Interference call. That well, didn't take long. The Vancouver Canucks this time on the losing end of the penalties here with Mellon going into the box. And 37 seconds left now in the williams Longino penalty. So the Islanders will have a four-on-three situation for 37 seconds. Problem with some of the fans down near the penalty box. There's the penalty right there, Dick. Bell end up setting Tonelli going in for the net, in front of the net. And everybody here now in front of us is up. Uh, well, I'll tell you what's happened down there, Mickey and Dick. Williams was being harassed by some fans, and he turned to his left, and you know that water jug now, you just squeeze it. It's like a water pistol, and that's what Tiger did. And, a shot. Yeah, a couple of shots. <laughs> you want to cool him off. <laughs> Leave it to Tiger. Well, Nick, we've had four goals in this period. Where's this low-scoring, tight-checking game you and I were talking about all day? You got it. <laughs> We're always right. <laughs> we did say one thing, another happens. <laughs> now Potvin to the line. Pearson back to Potvin. He lines himself up. Will he shoot it? No, not this time. It goes into Bossy. Maybe now. Potvin's shot is blocked in front of the net. They worked it around beautifully, but Lindgren was right there, and he made the save. Okay, David. 146 to be precise, remaining in the period. Now there's Brodeur clearing one to the corner. Bossy let it slide back to Pearson. Into the corner again. Bossy gets in position in the slot area. Bossy looks for him. Gets into Potvin. Potvin back to the line. Pearson into... Bossy! It's a goal, post! Scramble! Puck is loose! Brodeur down! And the Canucks come up with it and clear it down the ice. A shot off the goalpost. A lot of the fans felt it was in and out. Hit the post. Score is tied. That two is Pache. Comes to center. Beautiful work by Trotsche. Bossy in the slot again. Back in front it comes. And the Canucks That's cover it and clear it. A minute left. Redeem tied it from Moline and Frazier. At 17.40. That's the way she stands now with Gillies painting to move it out. 45 seconds left in the period. Lindgren just shoots it up on the far side, sending the Islanders back. 38 seconds left in the Vancouver penalty. Coming in is Bossy again. Bossy lost the chance to set it up. Might get another, though. It bounced right down to him. Roder covering, knocked it into the corner, and that's Bill. Gillies after him. 23 seconds left of the period. Redeem trying to dig it out for Vancouver. They get a whistle for a face-off in the Canucks zone to the left. Mike Bossy, a fraction of an inch or so away from his second goal of the night, hit the post dead on. But Mickey Berger was beaten on the play. Well, you can hear the rap of it all the way up here in the booth, Dick, but unlike the, the one that he did score on a moment ago, uh, Bossy had this one labeled all the way. He knew where it was going. Look at this thing. It gets pinned around there like a pinball machine. Trache taking a whack at it. Gillies with a whack at it. And Vancouver finally covered up and got it out of harm's way. But look at this. Bossy bingo. Does he ever let that thing go? Well, the red light did not go on. The referee had an excellent angle. Right, uh, Harris was right at the line. There's no doubt about it. It was not in there. No argument from the Islanders. Uh, goal judges saw. Saul 
Maslow, the offense officials from the New York Rangers. 19 seconds left of the period. And on the power play, Pierce on a putt back. Putt back shot. And Brodeur stopped it. And watch out now. The Canucks are in there covering around the goaltender. They felt maybe somebody got a little too close to Brodeur when he had made the save. The last few minutes of this game, there have been a few shots, cheap and otherwise, taken. Mick, when the whistles have gone, the checks have been made. Everybody wants to get in the last one. Well, Dick, I, I think uh, I agree with you, what you said earlier. I think that this is going to be a very tough series. Uh, uh, I, I don't uh, underestimate the Vancouver Canucks at all. They're going to play the body a lot. I think they're going to frustrate the Islanders on this play. Sutter took a little whack at uh, Brodeur after he covered it up, and the Canucks right to his aid immediately. And here's a look at it. You see, he's already got it covered up, and Sutter jams a stick in there. Just a little chippiness that you're talking about. It's going to be a long series, I think, between these two. Only 12 seconds left of the period. That's Goring getting it back. Hot pass shot. Score! Nine seconds left of the period. And caught by a blast of the shot. It was deflected in front of the net. I think it hit something went up high. Well, again, we'll have to wait and see on the replay. We may be able to tell here. Right there. It's hard to tell that maybe John Tanelli. Standing in front of Richard Badur, he had his back turned to Potvin, and I think it went right out the seat of his pants, Dick. It's Potvin think, gets credit for the goal. It's not even hit his stick, it was over the shoulder. I well, think it went right in, Mick, right we'll up into on, the top on, corner. On the announcement, it, it looked to me like it may have deflected off of the, uh, the pants of John Tanelli, but we'll wait and see on the announcement. Nevertheless, a bad goal for the Canucks to give up. They give it up, Potvin. And Goring on the draw. Of course, got the assist. 1951, the time of the goal. And the horn goes to end the first period. And a big, big goal for the New York Islanders. Well, here's another look at it, Dick. See if we can tell from here. Oh, I it's really right hard to tell. But uh, I guess we'll just have to wait and see if they change it or not. Uh, Pretty obvious it's going to be Potvin. And the shots were even at 12. So the score at the end of the first period, the New York Islanders 3 and the Vancouver Canucks 2. But we're ready for the second period. Here in the Nassau Coliseum, Long Island, New York. Islanders 3, Canucks 2. From the draw, Lane gets it back inside his own line. Potvin works his way to center ice. Backhands one in, it's in the corner back of the net now. Bourne went after it, Bossy couldn't stop it. Lane took a shot, that was blocked by Gradin. Steele couldn't come up with it. The Islanders in their own zone. Knocked in front of the net, Lane near the line stopped it. Couldn't get a shot, and here come the Canucks. The pass, down to center, the long shot by Steele was wide. And it's back to Lindgren. Lindgren ahead. Redeem has to go back again. Circling at his own line. Nice pass for Williams. In with Smeal. A rising shot by Williams. Is off the glass. Lane trying to dig it out for the New York Islanders. Bossy bumped on the board. But here's Bourne coming down. Bourne gets set. Tried to go in around the defense and cut. Lindgren had him taped all the way. Carried him in on the boards. They fall to the ice. And the referee, Wally Harris, calls the play at 104 of this second period. Now there's Tiger Williams. You see his regular season penalty statistics. And along the way, he became the most penalized player in the history of the National Hockey League. He picked up a minor penalty in the first period here tonight. He has served 104 minutes in this playoff year through 13 games plus one period. It's 3-2, the New York Islanders, Merrick, Tonelli, and Nystrom, Olin, Miner, and Fraser. Up to the line, Langevin shot, it missed by much. Roger had to watch it carefully. Nystrom comes back in his own zone. He nearly had it knocked away by Moline. Now to center is Merrick. Nice from going in the slot area. Nice from in front. And Broder got down on the two knees and gave Nice from no room. Back for Vancouver. And the Islanders tugging along now. That was Canelli getting back. 
Nice to on the right wing side. Comes to center, lobbed it in for Tonelli. Tonelli is being chopped. Knocked back of the net by Moline. Again, Tonelli looks for some room. Can't find it. Moline staying with him. Now Moline falls. It's centered. Off the boards to the line. Longevin failed to keep it in. He knocked it back in. And they call it on the offside. 21-year-old Anders Elderbreak, a rookie from Sweden, former national team player there. Penalized for holding. Watch the play. Goring with the puck, but Gillies is the one who Elderbreak fouls in front of the net. And watch Bernier again. He gets nailed again by Gillies and Elderbreak right there, and he goes flying back into that goal post. Dick, he's going to be wondering what's going on here tonight. It's two pretty heavy checks on Bernier right in a row. Though. And the Islanders again with a man advantage. McKee. Hot pass, stopped it up the line. He and Pearson, there's Pearson at center ice. Bourne, number 14, Trotsche coming in with Bourne. Bourne slapped it to the corner. Bossy is out there also. At the line, Pearson shooting. Rebound. And it's not back in the net. Trotsche set on his goal. Hot pass, just cruising in from the blue line. He waited. Made his move at the right time. Eric, Dick, earlier you talked about the Islanders and just sitting back and waiting and doing what they do best. Good example of it here. Trotche just taking his time. He knows Pat Ben. He jumped into the hole in the slot area. Trotche very carefully just took it back there. Didn't rush it. Pretty little feathery pass out to Pat Ben and they go for two hockey game. Well, another power play goal for the Islanders. Mickey, there is a defense man who plays that as well as Potbat. Oh, His sense right. of timing, he waits, he sees the opening. Of course, when you get players that have been together as long as these two. Here it is again. Look at Trache, knocked off the puck almost. He could have almost came around and jammed that in himself, but he spotted Potbat breaking into the hole and put it right on his stick. 3.15, the time of the goal. Trache and Pearson got assists. Elderbrink was off for holding at the time. Now then, Lane for New York. Lob pass on the boards to center, stopped by Lindgren. And he gave it away, and this is Potman again, circling back. With Lane behind him, Potman fired it in by Bossy, the goaltender. Gurr has to play it, but no icing. Campbell's trying to clear it out, he does. Lane is covering over there on Grenine. Grenine and Lane go to the boards in the corner. Lane fell. Grenine has it. He was knocked down. And a penalty coming up against the New York Islanders. As Grenine was upended. This is Hockey Night in Canada from the Nar The Islanders lead the game 4-2. to two. The infraction occurring in back behind the New York goal to our left right here. He goes down. Whoops. It's Grenine. He trips. And <laughs> Grenine tripped Chachi. I thought they were both going for a minute. How many tripping panels do you see called when he trips him with his hand? Not too many in this sport. Anything you can get. <laughs> the Vancouver power play. Gradine comes to center. Only in up the line. With Bellin. Smeal. Only in and his pass is outside the line. Now Smeal. Lost it. Pache with Goring. They shoot it down the ice. Mickey, that New York Islanders power play is dynamite. Let's see how the Canucks make up now. The center ice, they have the man advantage. Smeal coming in, flipped it in front, and Carroll, good skater. Carroll comes to center. The Goring, he tipped it near the Vancouver line. Moline couldn't stop Carroll. Carroll going into the corner. He was bumped back there by Bellin. Redeem going back to help. And the Canucks organizing with a minute 10 seconds left. In the penalty, they're in over the line. The long shot blocked by Langevin. He can't clear it now. He kind of booted out. And the, the Canucks coming in front, score! A harmless looking shot by Steele. And it just slid along the ice on the stick side of Billy Smith. And it's another power play goal in this game. Well, the Islanders not only upset at the goal, Dick, but again, one of the Canucks taking a pretty good run at Billy Smith. He just barreled right over top of him after the goal went in. The Canucks here now on the replay with control behind the net. Watch Smith. There's the shot coming from 
Smeal over there, and it's Gradine, I think, that piles right over top of Billy Smith. And both these goaltenders taking pretty much of a beating here in the first couple of periods. A tough night on the fellas between the pipes, I'll tell you. Oh, there's a look at a dick where, see, Potvin takes a pretty good run at Gradine, so that was not intentional at all. Well, they really haven't got much to argue about there. He was knocked into Billy Smith, but nevertheless, Smeal with the, the goal underneath Billy Smith moments earlier, a 4-3 hockey game. Well, we've had seven goals in this hockey game, and five have been scored on power play. Time of the goal was 5.06. 5.06, the time of the goal. So it's 4-3. The Canucks within one again of the New York Islanders. Coming out is Merrick. He's bumped hard by Snaps as he tried to go around the big fella. Snaps. The big defenseman lugged it across the line and lost control of it. That's Tonelli with it for New York. Nice to chop it in. Snaps is back here again. He's been a standout in the playoffs for the Vancouver Canucks. That's nice to battling his way in the corner. Puck comes loose and the Canucks shoot at the center ice. Nystrom was back to break it up. Nystrom lost it against Miner. Canucks shoot it in. The near the six minute mark of the second period. And this is Bobby Nystrom. He cleared it by Merrick down the ice. It'll be called for icing as Howard goes back. And it'll come back to the New York zone. Smeal is eight from Ravine and Fraser at 5.06. Well, there is the veteran in the Canuck lineup from the standpoint of point of service with Vancouver, Harold Snaps, eighth season. Now, here we get some of the rough stuff with a close-up look. Now, we've got something going on here. Billy Smith? Billy Smith, <laughs> Billy Smith really giving it to Wally Harris at the side of his net there. Here's a look at Billy. He's a little cooler right now, but he was never known for his calmness in the hockey game. Dick, you mentioned at the top. He gave Wally Harris a pretty good piece of his mind just a moment ago with all the rough stuff going around in his crease area. Boulder wrap, number nine at center, nil to the left side. They're out of position, they'll have to do it again. Darcy Rona also on there for Vancouver. Boulder wrap with the draw. Nil gets it back. A long shot by Lindgren is wide. Elderbrink tried to keep it in and bounced over the boards near the Vancouver bench. Took a big goal for the Canucks to score. They were down by two. This crowd, you could almost feel when the Islanders scored their fourth goal, the crowd thought, ah, oh, finally we're up by a couple of goals. It looks like we're going to run away with this thing. This is what we thought we'd be and where we should be here in this hockey game. But bingo, the Canucks are right back and uh, a fresh start again. Just uh, trailing by the one. Tom Terry mentioning how he read where the Islanders said some of them were bored by the Stanley Cup playoffs this year. They'll be Surely pretty, not. They'll be pretty bored if they drop a hockey game here at the Nassau Coliseum, I'll tell you. <laughs> they'll wake up awful fast. That's Keller dumping it down the ice for New York. Lindgren at his own line. Long pass ahead. Canucks go outside. That was Dill. He tried to straddle the line, but it was just him. See the line changes. Roger Nielsen had them coming and going over the boards there about one oh. second after the puck was dropped. They all headed over. Here they come again. Another used to change. refer to Dick when we were playing and getting the hook. Well, I'll tell you, that, that hook is out there all the time. 20, 30 second line shifts. Sometimes not even that. It's unbelievable. You, I'll tell you, in a situation like that, you've really got to be alert on the bench. That's the one thing. Well coached hockey team, disciplined and alert to go out there. Even if you come off 10 seconds ago, be ready to go right back. Not to mention our job up here to talk to Roger <laughs> after this one but it's working very well for the Vancouver Canucks so it's 4-3 now Islanders and the Canucks trying to get something going but center gets as far as center shoots it in that's Elderbrink back there he lost it Islanders for checking in front of center he was covered right away and it's knocked down at the blue line and the center right. Rhoda got rid of it. Long shot by Neil off the board. Billy Smith cleared it into the corner himself. Up back there. And Carroll, he was bunched. Now center gets it ahead. Carroll's pass on the left side. They come in. Keller's shot. That was blocked at the defense. 
Rhoda coming out. He's on the right side as Bolderev carries in. Bolderev shooting right in front of the net. And down goes Smith. And he made the save. Nearing the eight minute mark of the second period. It's 4 3 New York. This is Potman again. A real strong game thus far for Potman. That's no surprise. But he's been playing super hockey. With the score, the New York Islanders four and the Canucks three. This is Stanley Cup 80. I'm Bob Cole with Mickey Redmond and Dick Irvin. At the Nassau Coliseum, Long Island, New York, game one of the Stanley Cup final. It's four to three, New York. And here come the Ivy. Canucks with Grenine stop. Just inside the Islanders line for Merrick. Merrick in with a shot. Deflected off the stick. But Canelli is right in on the play. Canelli dumped it to the side. Merrick taking a look. Got it in the crease area. Roder fell on it. The European influence is making itself felt here tonight, gentlemen. We have five Swedish players in the game. They've accounted for a total of six points so far. Well, Dick, it's interesting. First time tonight, I think, we've seen two lines complete out there. Merrick, Canelli, and Nystrom will usually play together for Long Island. And Gerdine, Fraser, and Smeal for the Canucks. This may be the first and only time we'll see it all night long. Two complete lines out there. Vancouver trying to clear to get it out. Nice from his back. Dumped it to Pearson. Didn't work. That's Smeal trying to find some room on the boards. They're offside as they cross the line. And they come up pushing and shoving. There's one wild swing. <laughs> Look at that. Landed. It's quite a combination at close quarters. Harold Sneps and Bob Nystrom. Couple of tough guys, Dick. <laughs> There's some fun on the board. Bob Nystrom has four Stanley Cup overtime goals. He's second to Rocket Richard with six. And Mickey came so close to getting number five last Saturday night in Quebec. He had the chance on the same play Merrick scored. Here's how this all began. Waltz me around again, Willie. Tonelli been a tower of strength for the Islanders tonight. A great skater. Out there. He's had a super year for Al Arbor. And, well, he just never stopped skating out there. He's got a tremendous set of legs. He's a good, tough hockey player up and down that wing. That was a, that was a good line. Those two games in Quebec. That Merrick line, I thought, was the most consistent for the Islanders over the two nights. Redeen with Fraser. They get the draw, but then lose it quickly. And Bossy is away. Coming in with Bourne. Snips. Ever present back inside the Vancouver line. But Bossy and on the boards. There's Bourne going back there. But Bellin hangs on to it. Puck is still playable. Still loose. Referee standing right there. Allows the play to continue. Bellin doing a pretty good job. He got it cleared for Smeal. Smeal coming out. Steps up on this play with Redeen. Redeen tried to go in. Have a stop. Now the Canucks shoot it in, they're called to the offside as Bredin was going off at the bench. Now well, there's number 14, Bob Bourne, who has eight playoff goals, one of them, as you see, short-handed. Had a contract problem at the start of the year, did not play with Team Canada, or at least go to their training camp because of it. Had a series of slumps during the year that cut his production somewhat. But he seems to be skating in fairly old-time style here in the playoffs. And hello to you, too. Tell you, the organist is in great form, Bob. Another winner. <laughs> Minor with Moline and Williams for the Vancouver Canucks. Islanders lead by one. Sutter missed, knocking down that pass by an eyelash. He was in behind everybody. There's Gillies in the corner. Gillies dropped it behind the net for Sutter. Wayne Sutter couldn't clear it, now comes in front, and Williams got back there, as Gorin was knocked to the ice, and the Canucks are away, Bolderev, he's coming in, Bolderev, great play, scores, Bolderev, every so often you see this wizard with the stick handling, and he went right through, and you saw it, it was a beautiful effort, it's tied. <laughs> Ivan Bolderev. With his seventh playoff goal, and Mickey, what a tremendous individual play. Look at this. Unbelievable. Bull ref doing it all alone. You know why, Dick? His, his other line mates were trying to change again. They were at the bench. They just barely stayed onside as Bull ref broke over the blue line. 
Split between Potvin and Gordy Lane, and he picked the top corner. Smith out, went down early, a new hockey game again. Four to four. Number nine, Ivan Boulderev. The assist to number 22, Tiger Williams. Five of the goal is nine. 9.27, it's tied at four, and the Canucks are in for it again. But now, Islanders clear through the two defensemen to the center ice area. Gillies went off stride, but Putman is away. In with Gillies. It's slapped back near center by Boulderad. And the Canucks shoot it in across the New York line. Lane is back there. Lane bumped by Rhoda. Lane comes up with a puck. Trying to clear it out. Gets across the line to center. He's in on the left side with Bourne centering it. It comes all the way back to Lane on this right wing. Now back for Bolderov. The play is called and they've got a fight going now. That's Sutter. Might be another one going. Sutter and Campbell, Bob, the, the original two combatants, got away from it. Jim Neal and Gordy Lane, who had rushed in to pinch in on his blue line position. Two lines went in immediately to get these two broken up. Colin Campbell on top of Dwayne Sutter. Here's scoring for the knockdowns at the bell or whatever. Campbell, a clear winner in that confrontation. It took place well behind the play. Well, you know, Dick, again, Sutter went straight to the front of that net. And Campbell was right there to intercept him. Look, at they're going to go at it again. Gordon this time. Boy. And Campbell, Campbell gets it at it again. Bobby Boy. Boy. This is going to be interesting now to see what the call is on this. Two guys have fought with Campbell. They should, by all purposes, get five minute majors each. Born, Sutter. Now, here goes another fight. Rhoda and Sutter. It's the second fight. And Rhoda is really driving that left hand in. Well, somebody going to hold on there. There's no line coming around to, to break them up. They're all with uh, the other two, Campbell and Born. Well, keeping track of the numbers, you have Campbell and Sutter now in two fights <laughs> and singles for. <laughs> Looks like a tag team <laughs> Rhoda and Bourne. One fight each, the other two with a couple. So, battle scar veteran Colin Campbell. Well, you could see it coming, Dick. You talked about it earlier in the first period that uh, there's a lot of chippiness going on out there, and I think we're going to see more of this before this series is over. So Rhoda got five and ten, Smeal five and ten, Fraser a ten and a misconduct, Nystrom five and ten. A nice shot by Gillies, ripped it, and just wide. Scored tied at four and two and a half minutes left in the second period. Williams shooting it in for Vancouver. The Canucks changing again now as Goring starts out for New York. Laid it in off the boards. Ruger out of the net, flipped it up on the board, center kept it in. But right there is Gradine. Cleared it away for Hallward. He got as far as the line. And the Canucks carry on. The center ice in across the line. Neil was not flying. Back for Tranche. Bossy is trailing. Bossy gets in front. Gillies had the pass go behind him. Pearson got back. Tranche again. There goes Keller. He centered it. That's just too hot to handle for Bossy. He went off his skate. Now Bossy took a shot. And that's cleared into the corner. The Canucks. Howard going over with Gradine. They hold it on the boards. It comes loose. DeLorme trying to move it out. DeLorme to Snaps. A minute and a half left of the period. Good move by Snaps. In front of the net, Gradine. And a low backhander, a weak one. Billy Smith is up quickly this time. And Steps is in the middle of the ball. Is, is all this really necessary after every whistle? Ron DeLorme out there, I think possibly for the first time. Notice how Don Cherry sneaked the mention of Ron in. Played with Cordon in Colorado a couple of seasons ago. But with all the players now sitting out there misconducts, these coaches have got to go all the way down the bench. I'm surprised, Dick, at this point that uh, Smith has not been uh, a little more excited excitable in that Islander net. He's taken a pretty good beating for these Canucks, and we really haven't seen the well, there's old the Billy Smith. Sorry, Dick. Uh, Stan Smeal, that's the Vancouver dressing room as we eavesdrop and peek in on all these players who have been dispatched to the rooms by the officials. 
You know, you know, we're used to seeing Smith use that big goal stick, stick, Dick, and I'm sort of just waiting here to see when he's just going to get to his breaking point and get into action. He's given it to it to Wally Harris verbally, but uh, physically not done too much yet. I think the Canucks have gotten to him pretty well. Nick, I hope you have to wait till the end of the game. And that's <laughs> you and me both. Elder Brink from the blue line. That was shot blocked. Pass in behind. Brent Sutter. He stopped. Elder Brink going back to the net for Vancouver. Boulder up, skates to the right side. Elder Brink comes the other way. With it. One minute now. Left of the second period. It's tied at four. Back in for the Islanders, Tonelli, offside is called, looks like one of the lines from Bob Hodges took a spill near the Vancouver Blue Line, and now Hodges working in his first Stanley Cup final game, 10 years of service, he's shaken up. It looked like Bob John D'Amico will be, of course, ready to... Go into action if he has to. He's a backup linesman here tonight. Here's what happened, Bob. It looked like Wally Harris get, trying to get out of the way of a play. He got tripped right oh. there. And look at the skate come up. It caught him on the right arm, the skate of Wally Harris. Harris looking at the play, making sure he was out of the way and didn't see the errant stick that was laying there. And it tripped him up, and his right skate come up and caught Bob Hodges. Although he looks like he's okay, thank goodness. And able to continue. Talk about an unusual happening. Official hurting well, official. We've seen referees get hit by the pucks and run into by the players, of course, many times. But I don't think I've ever seen something like this happen. Now watch Wally Harris escape. He loses balance. Whoop. Bingo. Right on the right side or up, upper arm of Bob Hodges, but he's back. Been off skates for a little while. He told me this morning about him in the shorts and the, and the uh, running outfit he had done seven or eight miles by that time. Uh, Mickey, you all jogging this morning to get in shape. Like Not that. me. I haven't nope. got out of bed yet. <laughs> John D'Amico and Ron Wicks are here, I believe, as, to serve as backup officials. Back for Morrow. With only 45 seconds left in the period. Merrick over there. The center. Made it up across the line and Williams. Backhands at the center ice again. 34 seconds left in the period. That's Putman trying to set it up. Snaps now is back in there. Sutter chasing him. Brent Sutter and snaps in on the boards. That's Tonelli trying to knock it in front. 20 seconds left in the period. The Islanders with a blitz on. Snaps over there. Trying to cover up. Roger had a notion to step in behind the net. Got back in in a hurry. And the Canucks get into center with eight seconds left in the period. Sutter back in, but offside this time. And with only six seconds to play, they'll have a face-off just outside the Vancouver Blue Line. That was a young man who made his presence felt very early in this hockey game, Lars Moline, who set up Thomas Gradine for the opening goal of this final round. Back at the 129 mark of the first period, seems like quite a while ago. It was quite a while ago. Bob Nystrom was cut three stitches needed to close the gash that you saw as a result of that fight with Smeal. They drop it in, Williams and Goring. The face-off spot, it's cleared down the ice, just wide of the net as the horn goes. To end the second period. Shots on goal in the second period, And the shots on goal. In the second period, Vancouver out shooting the Islanders 9 to 6. And the score at the end of the second period, the Islanders 4, and the Vancouver Canucks. It's a big opportunity for Canucks to take it. Win this period of hockey, what an advantage that would be throughout the rest of this series. Hallward and Snaps on the Vancouver defense as we start the third period. Hallward, horse back by Goring. Here comes Big Gillies. Gillies trying to get it loose, but they hold it on the boards, and the fans love the way the Islanders have come out charged up for this third period. Well, if they are so much better than the Canucks, as all of the so-called experts have been saying they are, four straight, five, whatever, now's the time they've got to show it. They just can't drift through this first hockey game. They can't let the Canucks get that edge you just spoke of, Mickey Redman. It's interesting right now, Dick. Uh, Wally Harris holding up Roger Nielsen is not allowed to make another line change. 
And Al Arbor has thrown a Trachi, Carroll, and Bossy. Williams still on the ice, so Arbor evidently doesn't care if Bossy's against Williams out there. Boldarev is into the faceoff circle against Trottier. Got the draw and snaps hustling back for it for Vancouver. Got a pass to Boldarev. It's off his stick over the boards at the Vancouver bench. Well, there is Denny Potvin, who did not have a scoring point through the first six games that the Islanders played in the playoffs this year, but then came to light. He has a goal here tonight and has 13 scoring points in his last nine playoff games. And now Moline and Miner come out oh. along with Dave Williams of Vancouver. There we go again, Bob. The Islanders with that last change, being that they're on their home ice, they have that advantage. And Nielsen made some changes, and Arbor counteracts with some changes of his own. Very good center. With Tonelli on the left side, and Brent Sutter in the right wing. Down goes Brodeur, covering up and hanging on to it. And the Canucks make these seem to be the type of hockey players now that they're willing to sit back and wait, cover their checks in their own zone and get those face offs if they can wait till they get a chance to move out you betcha they're on the road they don't have to put on a show they're here to get that first game of the series and they don't care how they do it you're going to see them dumping that puck out playing it very safe as safe as they can here against the Islanders and hope to pick up something at the other end and go ahead in this hockey game snaps moved it up on the right wing boards lines have been kept it in though they'll get another whistle and another face off in the Vancouver zone but as you say, Mickey, they're all back, well positioned, nobody moving out of his spot. You know, it's early in the series to talk about important games, I guess, Dick, or important face-offs or what have you, but I heard the conversation about how important that game the Islanders was against Quebec in Game 3. They won the overtime, and of course, you, Quebec wins that, they come back, it's a, it's a complete nuisance for them to come back 2-1, to one. but here's the third period of hockey with the Canucks. 4-4 four four with the Islanders, and boy, if they can bear down here and hang in this third period, somehow come out of here with a victory, what an advantage that would be, as I said before. A lot of red faces walking away from media row. <laughs> Lindgren and Elderbrink on the Vancouver defense as Longevin has to go back. Nil went up looking for it. There's Jim Nil. He missed that pass. Tonelli. The Islanders gets it up on the right side for Trotze going in. He has to stop quickly. Back for Bossy. Bossy in against Elderbrink. It's cleared along the boards, but not out. Now the Canucks get it out across the line. Elderbrink to center ice and went by. And down over that red line. No icing. Play goes right on. They played a minute and a half of the period. There's Bossy over skating it. Tipped away by Lindgren. Got it ahead for Miner. He couldn't hang on to it. And Billy Smith tipped it up on the boards for Trotsky and he back up with it. Got it over on the other side. Longevin will bring it out now. He played it on the left wing boards to center ice and slides back into the Vancouver zone. Elder Brink didn't see Trotsky come in. Trotsky hooked it over behind the net. Now he chases it against Lindgren. And Morrow missed that one and went down the ice. Going back is Potvin. This is icing called against Vancouver. From the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York, this is Stanley Cup 82. All right, Mickey Rabin, there's the time remaining, 9-16. Vancouver will not change their style now. There's no question about it, Bob. They're very happy, I'm sure, with the way things are going. They'd rather be ahead, but they're in the Islanders' building, and they're just hoping to hang on here, get something of their own here, but to mainly keep those Islanders off the board. They're all back there, covering up again. That's Moline clearing it up to center ice. There's Moline trying to shot high. Into the corner, Janssen to Bourne. Islanders organizing, Bourne coming down to center. Had it knocked away by Moline, who got back there. And the Canucks shoot it down the ice again. Janssen back to the net. Icing called against Vancouver. We are continuing our census taking in the penalty box. Only two remain down there now. Stan Spiel and Bob Nystrom sitting up the 15 minutes they picked up at the 17-20 mark of the second period. Dick, I don't think that I've ever seen a hockey team play a game as well-disciplined as the Vancouver Canucks have played here tonight. I mean, they just haven't missed a beat. They're right there. 
We'll look at some of the action again. Trache, Williams hanging onto him very closely. And the lens got wet in the camera. <laughs> but they have just been perfect to the T on playing the, the type of game they come in here to play. Right on the Islanders every time they move. 8.49 remaining in the third period. Goring with Keller and Gilly. Longevin and Pearson. That's Gilly. That's Longevin. Shot deflected and Brodeur covering again. Hangs on to it. 8.45 remaining. Two games played here during the regular season. Dave pointed out the top of the broadcast. The Islanders were 4-1 winners. Vancouver won the game in Vancouver 4-3. Interestingly enough, in those three games, not one power play goal scored by either team. Tonight we've had five so far. The Islanders Goring comes into that big circle. Against Gradine. Goring got it back to Gillies. Gillies closing in. Gillies centered it. It hit the side of the net. Gillies again. Centered it. And it bounced on a stick and comes to the right side where Hill cleared it out to center ice to Frazier. He was stopped. Now Goring hustles back. Butch Goring. He'll try to get it going. And he has now, I believe. Goring shot. That was blocked in front of the net by Campbell who fell in front of it. Frazier tipping it out. Three Canucks come to center. That's Dill and Frazier going in. And a shot to flex off the stick of Langevin up over the glass. Into the crowd, 8-10 remaining in regulation time. There's Richard Bader going for his little stroll every time the whistle goes. Going for a little skate down the corner, deep loose, one side, then the other. I don't know any goaltender I've ever seen who does that as often as he does in a hockey game. Remember how Dryden used to stand with the stick, oh, yeah. chin on the gloves of the stick, and that was his trademark, and now Bader, a little mark of his own, he's just keeping loose down there, but... Billy Smith right now that should be keeping loose. The Vancouver team really has not had many opportunities here in the third period. It's the first time we've seen him over the Islanders line in a few minutes. Boulder out with Rhoda and Moline for Vancouver. But the Islanders, Barry coming in with Tonelli. Sliced off the board. Tonelli battling for it. Trying to knock it back to the line where Longevin is waiting. Barry loses his stick to Lindgren. The fans thought maybe the Vancouver player grabbed it away from the New York Islander. Tonelli missed it at center. Boulderab moved in. Boulderab gets set. Took a shot. That was blocked by Pearson. Now the Islanders. Pearson dumped it ahead. Merrick played it off the right side and center shot. Rifled off the boards. And the Canucks, three of them, come to center ice. Coming in, Moline. Moline took the drive. That was blocked in front of Potman. Sent it out to center ice. 7.15 remaining in regulation time. The score tied at four. Allward coming out. Up to center is nil. Stopped by Potman. On the boards, Potman. Put knock it loose. And Morrow has to go back. That's Williams chasing him. Williams bumping over there on the boards. Right in front of the net, they score! Jim Nell got loose, and he appeared, Nicky, to lose control of it, but nobody cares. It crossed the line, and it's by for Vancouver. And you have got to give Tiger Williams credit on this. He chased Morrow in back, around behind the net, made the play. What a move he put on Potman here. Look at that thing, like a curling rock. Just barely got over that line, but nevertheless, 5-4 Vancouver. And talk about guys that score big goals. The big goal by Neil the other night in Chicago. The overtime goal before that, and here to put them up front with 6.54 to go. I'm going to take that back. He didn't lose control of that. He made an excellent move on Billy Smith and went for that five hole and put it through. It appeared first, but thank goodness for the replays. You can see he made a great move. Jim Nell, 5-4. Vancouver at 13.06. Here they are again. And Smith picks one out. That's Fraser with it. Another drive. Smith had to grab that one and drop it for putt back. Now 6.20 left in regulation time. And the Canucks are up by one on these defending Stanley Cup champion New York Islanders. Into the corner goes Billy Carroll with Sutter. And here comes Gillies bumping with his fan. They hold it on the boards, it comes loose, Carroll, out of the And Brodeur standing his ground again. 
They cannot believe what's happening in front of Richard Brodeur. But they can't jam it by him. He can frustrate you. And that is exactly what is happening. Outstanding goaltending. Very steady. Standing up always. Live from the Nassau Coliseum in Unionville. The go-ahead goal by Nil, his fourth from Williams and Minor at 13.06. 5.45 remaining in regulation time. The Canucks leading by one. Ford dropped it back. Janssen got away from a check. He's going in against Moline. Into the corner for a stop, but there's Bossy centering it. Miner got back to cover up. Bossy upended. Coming out, the Canucks. Moline to center, took a shot. Smith blocked that. There's Miner after it. He left it for Williams. Great move by Williams. He comes in front and then can't get loose for his shot. The Islanders, Bob Ford. Trying to move it out. Gets it ahead to Janssen. He's coming in with Trotsch and Bossy. He lost it just in over the line. And the Canucks break away. Coming back in Moline with Williams. Canucks change quickly now. With five minutes remaining in regulation time. Trotsch is passed down to Bossy. Coming right in. Out of the net. It's loose. Scramble. They score. Frozen, Mickey. He came out of the net and got away from him. Right here. His own man, Harold Stepps, ran into him, Dick. Unfortunately for Vancouver at the last minute, there's Bossy. Tonelli with a little kick of it to Bossy, and he had to get it, and that would not be allowed. But look at it. You see Stepps runs over top of him, and look at the loose puck. Bolarev checks, can't clear it, and a little kick right there by Tonelli, and there's Bossy all alone. 4.46 to go, 5-5 hockey game. Bolderev swung at the puck and missed. That was the, another tough break for the Canucks. Mike Bossy, his second of the night, 12th of the playoffs. 4.46 left in regulation time. It's tied, 5-5. Fifteen, fourteen. the time of the goal. It's tied now at five. And the Islanders are at it again. Forcing the play inside the Vancouver line. They tie it up on the boards. The scoring play, Bossy. That was his 12th. Tonelli and Trotsia assisting. 15-14. Now everything was going Vancouver's way. It's the first bad break that they've really had. And the Islanders capitalize on it. We're in for quite a four minute and 30 second period of time here now. Merrick, Nystrom, Antonelli. That's the buzzsaw line led by Nystrom's hustle. And the Canucks clear it down the ice. Coming back is Potvin. Icing is called against Vancouver. Tonelli now having a few words with Bill. Nystrom comes in to try to Keep Pinelli out of trouble. And Harold Snips is also there. You know, Mickey, the Islanders were on the downer after that goal by Nil, which was a great three-way play. Williams was the disturber, Miner made the good pass, and Nil made the super play at the net. But that goal has got obviously given them a life. But did you notice that leading up to that goal by Nil, Vancouver was starting to get a three-on-two break. And another, they had about three of them leading up to that goal. Well, I think Dick, that's another uh, example of the frustration shown by the Islanders are doing their best. They're trying their hardest out there to make it happen offensively, but Vancouver's just all over them. Every time they take a step, there's a Vancouver player there taking a piece of them, and it just frustrates them to no end. They start taking little bits of chances, and the next thing you know, there's Wally Harris. A long night for everybody here tonight. Nice to running into him. That's Campbell for Vancouver, getting rid of it. Hot back, kept it in, however, with Gillies. Now it comes to center right. Fraser missed the chance to pick it up. Here's Goring turning. He's cutting in with Taylor, waiting for the net with Goring. And Brodeur had to be careful and deflected. Now right back in front and Brodeur grabbed it. And this time the little goaltender hangs on to it. Yeah, that time Clark Gillies decided just to fire it in a general direction of the net from the sharp angle. Brodeur made the grab. You never know if it might deflect in. 
The big guy let it go almost in the corner of the ring. Dick, just to finish that thought off about the Islanders starting to open up and take a few chances. As a result of them getting caught, you're going to end up with those two-on-ones and three-on-twos. And here come the Islanders on the attack again. There's that deflection you spoke of, Dick, off a goring skate. And a very close chance again for the Canucks. 3.56 to go in regulation time. And the score is tied again. My ball now. That's Fraser over there for Vancouver. Smeal is catching up Fraser's long shot. Ends up behind the net. Hot man, the first one back for Gillies. Gillies dropped it there. The Canucks. Fraser to the far side against Keller. Keller forced to the corner. The Canucks have it. It's centered quickly. Another shot. Billy Smith came diving out of the net. And the Islanders pair to Goring. Goring coming in with Keller and Gillies. Gillies shot. Rebound. And Fraser is there for Vancouver, covering up on the boards. Gillies in against him, and they get a whistle with 318 remaining in regulation time. The Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York. So out he comes, Gradine in to take the face off against Merrick. Merrick hooked it back right off the draw. There's a low shot, but Pearson was wide. Longevin fired one off the net. Gradine. Stopping Tonelli, but Tonelli kicked it behind the goal. Lindgren trying to clear it. 35 seconds left in regulation time. Nystrom centering it. He fell. Lindgren fell. Nystrom got back up again in the Canucks nil, shooting it down the ice. It'll go over that red line. And with 23 seconds remaining in regulation time, the Canucks guilty of ice in the puck. It comes back this time to the right of Bluger where they'll drop it in. Wow. Now, Richard really takes a skate, Mickey, all the way to the corner boards and back. <laughs> you know, I don't think Nil meant to ice that puck. No. He just wanted to get out of harm's way out over that blue line. And it just rolled all the way down very slowly, but enough for that icing. You know, the Islanders scored that goal in the end of the first period with nine seconds left. And they won that direct draw. We just saw a direct win in the faceoff again back to the point. And they are beating the Canucks in these draws with 23 seconds left. This is big as a ball. And here come the big guns. That's Trache, Bossy, and Bourne with Potvin and Pearson parked inside the line. Jerry Miner into the faceoff circle against Trache. And no doubt he'll try to hook it back into the corner. Nil. Snaps. They're all poised. Lindgren. And Williams. The Canucks in control on this draw, but wait a minute. Now it's called again as Bourne held it along with Nil, and we have 18 seconds remaining in regulation time. I think, Dick, it was you who said, I think we're in for a long night. <laughs> we're looking at overtime now, folks. It's Mother's Day, and back home in Newfoundland. Here's a check for Chatsche. Missed it on the short side. 12 seconds left. Bossy slow getting up back there. Here's a chance for Miner. Six seconds left. Miner stops. Three seconds left. It's centered. But now the horn goes. Billy Smith was knocked down by Williams. And he gets back up in a fighting mood. Was he ever knocked down, Bob? Right as the buzzer went. Williams really cranked into Billy Smith and sent him flying. And Smith came up arguing with Wally Harris about it. Now he's pointing a finger at Tagger Williams. And Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Not a penalty called in that period after all the penalties in the second. Now, there you see it. Just the left of your screen, and with Smith hitting the deck. As the green light is on, you can see the period had ended. Then we get the little passel, the confrontation, the talking, and that is it. So they leave, and we are going into overtime. I'll tell you, I don't know if I've ever seen it one hockey game where the goaltenders Dick have taken such a beating at both ends of the rink. Boy, oh boy. You don't expect that kind of action when they put those pads on to come into a hockey game. Arbor, you can see openly upset with Wally Harris about not calling a penalty. Okay, it's tied at five. Overtime coming up. This is Stanley Cup 82 from the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale. For the record, in the third period, nil for Vancouver. And the Canucks look for the moment as if they might win it 5 4, but then Bossy got his 12th at 15 14. And that's the story now in scoring. 5 all. The shots over three periods 
The Islanders out shooting Vancouver 30 to 29. But, folks, this is sudden death overtime. It's anybody's game now. Potman played it up, and Tonelli had it go off his stick over the boards at the New York Islanders bench. I think we said it before about overtimes being decided very quickly once they start within the first five minutes. I guess a lot of people feel that's why they'd like to see it in the regular season, but it really doesn't take that long to get an outcome to these games, the overtime games. Uh, good 75-80% of them, uh, as the record tells. They had it in the WHA a few years ago in regulation time, uh, or in overtime uh, in the regulation season, and uh, within five minutes, a lot of them were finished. This is Morrow coming up to center ice. The Islanders get the puck in over the line for the first time in overtime. Roger having some difficulty. Over on the far side, Spiel gets it to the line. Harold Steps was right there on the spot to clear it. Morrow hopping back. There'll be no icing this time. Redine in against him. Now Bossy for Trache. He starts to the line with Bossy again. Over it goes the puck back. Winding up. A high whistling shot off the glass. Keller going in after it. He couldn't pick it up. Morrow from center, dumping a high one in. Going back is Lindgren. On the boards by Keller, down the ice. It'll go right on Billy Smith. He scooped it up. Morrow now. They played one minute of sudden death overtime. Game one of the 82. Stanley Cup final. Here's the pass to Bossy. Bossy closing in, winding up. Take the shot. Bossy gets it back. Long you let it go. Nowhere near the net. Three blocks come out of the zone now. Up as far as Pearson. He stopped it. And then Tonelli grabbed it on his own line. Back to center. Here's Tonelli on his feet. And he was stopped hitting the line. Bolderab gets it over there. Trailing the play is Bolderab. Spun around is Jim Neal. And Pearson back to the goal. There's Neal again in the corner. Rota centering it. And it escaped. Here's Polderad centering it. It comes right in front of Rolla. They find a way at it. And Nystrom gets away for New York. Coming out with Tonelli. Nystrom trailing. Nystrom breaking for the net. Tonelli centered in the Canucks covering up well. Hearing it again was Rolla. Two minutes gone in overtime. Polderad went after Pearson. Now Boulder have left it in center for Campbell and he shoots it in for Vancouver. The Canucks taking it to the Islanders in the early going of this overtime. Nystrom comes to center. Long shot in wide. Roger stopped it. Cleared it for Steps. This could be a break. Fraser failed to hang on to it. They nearly had the Islanders trapped on a player change. And icing is called now against Vancouver. Well, the goaltenders, Mick, I know you were a sniper in your day, but I don't know, I always kind of get a funny feeling about those fellas when they're in there in overtime. And you always hope that it is, as the saying goes, a good goal. Well, that's for sure. Both clubs playing good hockey here tonight. And it's tough to be a goaltender in regulation time, let alone in overtime. Goring on the draw against Credine. Got it in front. Goring still looks for it. So does Gillies. Morrow slapped it in off the boards and Snaps was there. Taking it away from his goaltender but couldn't clear it. Snaps goes back again against Goring. Snaps. Goring all over him. Hot bag coming up on the play. Now the Canucks get an opportunity to move it out of their own zone. They don't. Sutter kept it in. It's Sutter. Comes back to Hot bag. Walking up. But the shot deflected. Goring back to the minute to the crease. Here the way. Snaps falling. Can't get rid of it. Gillies now, pressure on by the Islanders. Morrow's shot, that's deflected wide. And Steele knocked into center ice. Hot back, pouring it back in for New York. Roger out of the net. 3.15 gone in overtime. The Canucks organizing, coming out. To center, this is Steele going in, shot. Kicked out by Billy Smith. The goaltender then stumbled and fell. Back to center, Keller. Coming in on this right side. Conche jamming on the brakes. Got it in front. Now her shot is blocked. That's Gradine. Hooked it ahead. Olene could pick it up for Vancouver. Pearson. Langevin. To center. Shooting it in. Here comes Keller. 
Keller tried to hook it in front. Here's Bossy. And in front of the net. And the play is called. A piece off coming up in the Vancouver's. But he's finished up on Jerry Miner. What a season he had. He had a fractured skull in training camp. Broken ankle later on. He only played 13 games and just returned in the Chicago series. So he's playing very well. Olderan right off the draw. Got a quick shot away, but it was wide of the net. Hot man lost it. It's centered in front of the goal, and Merrick was there to clear it down the ice. We have four minutes left in this first overtime period. As Canelli is in, it gets good wood on it. The Vancouver Canucks and the Islanders in this first game of the Stanley Cup Final 82. Locked in a five all time. And boy, some old feeling between these two teams. Well, there's some penalties here, Bob. I think Wally Harris is going to give, sounds like, or looks like from here, one to each team. Nice to arguing heavily with uh, Harris at this point, but, well, I'll tell you, when Tanelli went down in that corner, he laid a two-hander on Dougie Hallward, and the ensuing pileup from there, and some frustration again showing, I think, on John Tanelli's part. Tied up with a free skating style of his. They've taken pieces of him all night long. But it looks like Hallward and Nystrom going to go to the box. Well, this comes at 16-11 here in the first overtime period. First penalties called by Wally Harris. It's 17-20 in the second period in regulation time. See Tonelli there, a little bit frustrated, digging. Hallward comes up and gives him a little shot. Here comes Nystrom. And thank you, boys, says Wally Harris. He'll sit up and pull down for a couple of minutes. I guess they were the more vigorous twosome. Well, we all know, Dick, of course, in overtime, it takes a pretty flagrant type of an accident, not an accident, but a flagrant foul on any one individual's part uh, for the referee to signal a penalty. It's so critical. Uh, a lot of people disagree with that type of philosophy that it should be called like regulation time, but nevertheless, it will take something pretty open for them to make that penalty call. Billy Carroll out there right now hasn't seen much action in the overtime, if any. They drop it in. Carroll, a long shot, just missed that far corner as Putman let it go. Now the Canucks on the move. It's cleared in for Smeal by Gradine. Islanders cut back out, led by Bourne. Carroll gets in front of the net. There's Bourne with a chance. A shot in front of Carroll. And Bluger covered up beautifully on that short side. Smeal couldn't move it out. Carroll again. From the corner, played it behind the net, and finally he was bumped off the puck. Snips ahead to Gradin, out to center ice. The Canucks on the move. Gradin tried to go through, but Postman stopped him. Now Smeal from an angle, shot, glove save. Billy Smith, that was a rifle shot, and Billy Smith got that left hand up. Boy, that's the thing to do. You got nothing to do with it. You might as well let it go at the net. And Smeal, an excellent scoring chance. Smith with that very quick glove hand really picked it up. Interesting, Dick. You noted that Carroll is out there for, I think, the first time. And we to see if both coaches use uh, individuals. DeLorme Crawford for Vancouver have not played a whole lot tonight. Keller, Carroll, and so, of course, that fourth line, they like to call it. For the Islanders have not seen a lot of ice time. And I'm sure as more time goes on in these overtime or overtimes, we're going to see more of those guys on the ice. 3-0-3 left of this first overtime period. And it's Goring coming out for New York. In with Trotje. Trotje left it up the line. Pearson lost control of it. And went back into the center ice area. Trotje again, a long shot. Didn't get too far. It was deflected. And it just rolled into Bladur. 2.40 left. In this overtime, Goring nearly broke through. Fell as he tried to wheel in. There's going again. This time a shot. And the shot is away wide. Miner went after it. Lodgeman beat him to it. Elderbrink into the corner for Vancouver. He was bumped. Pearson couldn't keep it in. 2.20 left in this first overtime. And coming back is Elderbrink for Vancouver. And back to the net. And in the third, tied at five. We're in first overtime period with only two minutes remaining now. They've been unable to do it, these two teams. So far, anyway, there's Trotsche's shot. That's stopped by Brodeur. 
And the Canucks get rid of it. Hooking it up on the glass to center ice. 145 left in this overtime. Howard coming in. The penalties are over. He played it in on the boards. And the Canucks are making wholesale changes now. With the Islanders, Bossy coming out. 135 left in the overtime. As he cleared it in. Odeur back to the net stopping it. Williams and the Canucks missed the pass. 125 left in this first overtime. It's stolen by Nil. Nil for Vancouver shoots it in. And Billy Smith played it behind the net for Morrow with 115 left in this first overtime. This is Barry coming out. A long lead pass to Nelly. Coming in. Tonelli waiting on goal. And Roger came sliding out to rob the New York Islanders. John Tonelli with 106 left. All right, that tells you something about John Tonelli and about Richard Roger. Great play by Tonelli and Roger hung tough with a stop. Super stop for Vancouver. Well, some great speed by Tonelli again coming down on outside. Neil Bellin doing a good job, though, of getting a piece of him. And just enough to throw him off stride and let Berdeer go down and make the save. You Is wonder he... where they get that, that kind of energy after playing almost four periods of hockey. And a very appreciative hand by the, hand, the fans here at the island for both Tonelli and Richard Berdeer. They saw it for the right of Berdeer. It comes back to the line, and the Canucks get it going again. This is Williams. Straight down the left side. Roll the pass in front. Nobody could get near it with 55 seconds remaining in this first overtime. Over the boards again at the Vancouver bench. And there will be a face-off in the New York zone. It's been quite a hockey game, hasn't it? <laughs> Over four hours worth of it now. It's been four hours since Thomas Gradine opened the scoring back at 129 in the first period. We're now at 1908 in the first overtime period. Wayne Merrick a bit frustrated. We use that word again, Mick, as he yeah. flipped that puck off his stick and up into the Vancouver players bench area. Well, I, I know, Dick, I've used the word about four or five times tonight, but I, I just don't know of any other way to characterize what's happened here uh, because that is exactly what Vancouver has done to the Islanders and and it's worked to perfection here all night long. Hot fan for Morrow. New York trying to get organized. It slides down the ice. Berger has to play it. And the Canucks just get rid of it shooting it down the other way. This time it'll be icing though. Hot fan comes back. And 34 seconds remaining. In the first overtime period, and a big, big face-off coming up in the Vancouver zone to the left of Bladeur. Nail-biting time on the Islanders' bench. Well, here comes Bossy and Trotje off the Islander bench, and here comes Jerry Miner and Tiger Williams off the Vancouver bench. Jerry Miner will take the face off against Trache. 34 seconds left in this first overtime. And the Canucks, Campbell takes it in behind the net in the corner now. Rolled it on the glass to the center ice area. And Putman comes back. 20 seconds left in this first overtime. Gillies gets a break to center. Bossy is catching up on the play. But it's played back outside the line and then Gillies was slow getting out and the Islanders are offside with 13 seconds remaining in this first overtime period. I'm Bob Cole along with Mickey Redmond and Dick Irvin at the Nassau Coliseum in New York. Game one, the Stanley Cup final. The Vancouver Canucks coming into this series. Underdogs, but within a whisker of pulling out a victory here at the Islanders' home. 12 seconds left in the first overtime. And Snaps goes back to the net. Snaps will get rid of it. He did. Bossy! Two seconds left on the clock. Harold Snaps tried to get rid of the puck. And who was there? Mike 
you saw the time, and we have the disappointed Vancouver Canucks. Richard Brodeur. Ooh. He didn't like the camera pointing at him. Well, we'll go into the hockey game, Dick. Bossy again, unbelievable. That's the second one tonight, and he's wrapped out the goal post. Very unfortunate. Harold Steps went back to make the play. He thought he had it covered. Trying to dump it out, and Puck just did not get up off his stick. And it went right down to the stick of Bossy, who moved into the slot area. You see, Steps got checked right at the moment as he tried to shoot it. And Bossy with that high hard one on a short side. We get another angle of it, Dick, and watch just as Snaps goes to make that play out over the blue line. He gets slashed. I don't know what Islander it was. Maybe we'll see here. Right there. It looks like Trotchy, I think. And there's Bossy, Johnny on the spot. Look at the shot. In off the post. What a hockey game. Unfortunate for Vancouver that they have to lose, but a here's a close up on Roger. Bossy had great anticipation. And Nick, that's another thing. thing. Yeah that made the play. Who else would you want, as we said before tonight on one occasion when he didn't score, Jumped but right Mike Bossy, his third of the night, and the Islanders take the lead one game to nothing. On the strength of that 6-5 victory, this is Stanley Cup 82 from the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York. The Isles would win the series in four. Mike Bossy would set a record for a four-game series by scoring seven goals. In all, he'd score 17 goals during the playoffs, winning the Conn Smythe Trophy. Thanks for watching Vintage Games here on the NHL Network. I'm Dan Paul.